Okay, so the first and probably least important reason to use query would be visual appeal. If you've ever found yourself building up a query and pulling things down to multiple lines, which is kind of like a Laravel convention, you'll find yourself making this uh, a little bit harder to read. Now by this, I mean, if we were to get rid of the query method here and we were to do something like this, for me at least, the first thing I'd go to is this post and then down to the second line. That's just personally how I read this. Now, some people prefer to pull in the query method specifically and then go ahead and chain the most important parts on each line uh, so they have a line of their own. Now, for something as simple as this, it doesn't really make too much sense. Of course, there's nothing wrong with doing this. It's entirely personal preference. But when things start to get a little bit more complex, that's where sometimes the visual appeal of query comes in handy. Now, over in the database, if we just have a look, we've also got this published column here, which we can use to scope this. So I could then say where, I could even use a dynamic method, where published true, for example, and that would only give me back things that have been published. If, for example, we chose post two, that should give us back an empty collection, or we get a 404 because we've used first or fail. So it's really entirely up to you. If you would prefer to pull these important parts down to their own lines, then using query like this can be really handy just for the readability aspect of your code. However, let's look at a much more complex example here just to see how this would work nicely. Let's say that the published option came from the query string. So we were allowing the user to control whether they wanted to see published posts or not. This could be in some kind of filter uh, within a form. So we're gonna go ahead and pull in the request just here so we can access this. And doing this is a little bit more complicated. If we think about what would come through from the request, we might have something like include underscore unpublished, for example, which might just be an empty value. We're not gonna to wanna to immediately pass that through to where published or where published equals something. So what we would typically do in this instance is we would build up the query that we wanted to see. So we could do something like the following. Then we would come down and we would add in an if statement. So we would say if request include unpublished. So if that is available and filled in, you could even compare it to a string value or a boolean value and cast it then you would go ahead and continue to chain this on so this would be how you would just do it normally so let's just say where publish true so we're specifically saying that we want to use that and let's go ahead and make this not so if we don't want to include unpublished we're going to go ahead and set where publish to true to scope that and then down here we can go ahead and say post equals post get because ideally we would want to get a collection of posts regardless of their state. So let's just give this a refresh. You can see at the moment we've got a list of empty items. Let's just have a look why that is. That is of course because we are scoping this by the slug. We don't actually want to do that. So here we get a one item, one post back because by default we are only grabbing back things that are published. But if now we go ahead and we say include unpublished true, then we get back both of these. So obviously this is just a really, really simple example, but we could actually tidy this up with an eloquent method and then we can use query to make this a little bit tidier and better to read, in my opinion. So let's go ahead and just get rid of everything that we've done here. And let's just do this all in one line, which is always a little bit better. So we're gonna go ahead and say post and we're gonna say when, so we're gonna say not request include unpublished much like we did before and then with this we get a callback in here that gives us through a query builder which we can then use to scope this so query where or where published true and then we can go ahead and say get like this so if we head over now and give this a refresh we get exactly the same result including unpublished is being taken into account but sometimes you might have additional things in here that you might want to scope before this, for example. So you might have something that you want to do here. And I tend to find that doing this and then pulling this down and indenting both of these so they kind of match up just is a little bit better for readability. It might not be for you and that's absolutely fine, but the point is that using query and bringing the important things down to another line tends to make things a little bit more readable. So you can just scan down and each line has its own part of the query builder. Okay, so like I said, the visual appeal of this isn't the most important part of using query. Let's look at something a little bit more useful in the next episode.